This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic. In this video, we're going to determine whether two functions are inverse functions. And these are the three problems we do in this video. All right, we're going to determine whether f and g are inverse functions. Now remember, if they are inverse functions, then when you take f of g of x or you take g of f of x, you're going to get x. So let's see what happens when we do f of g of x. So this would be f of, well, g of x is 2 over x plus 6. And now we're going to plug 2, x, 2 over x plus 6 into this function for f. So we have 2 over, and then in place of this x here, we have to put 2 over x plus 6, right? And then we're subtracting 6. Okay. So just to make that real clear here, I'm putting it right here in place of this x. Okay. All right, so what does that give us? To go down a little bit. So conveniently, I've got 2 over x plus 6 minus 6, so that's just going to give you 2 over x. And now this is a complex fraction. This means 2 divided by 2 over x. There's lots of ways to simplify, simplify complex fractions. This is one way. Just write down what that means, multiply by the reciprocal and we get x. So if f of g of x equals x, then they are inverses of each other. Now, you could have also computed g of f of x, and you should also get that the answer is x. So let's do that. All right, so we are going to compute g of f of x. So that's g of now f of x is 2 over x minus 6, right? If you look over here, I mean, I'm sorry, if you look right here, that's what f is. And so now we're going to plug that into the g function. So we're going to plug in this for x, right? Because we're actually computing g of 2 minus x. So that gives you 2 over this stuff, 2 divided by x minus 6, and then we have plus the 6. So again, there's where I'm plugging it in. We have another complex fraction. So here we go. This means 2 divided by 2 over x plus 6, which is 2 times the reciprocal. And I also have this plus 6 out there, right? Um, sorry, that's a minus 6 right here. Just copying error. All right, so then the t's cancel. And I have x minus 6 plus 6 is x. So yes, I did get that the these um, two functions are inverses. So I could write that. F and G are inverse functions. All right, let's do another problem. This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic.
All right, so now we're determining whether f and g are inverses for these two functions. So we're going to do the same thing. Let's compute f of g of x, and if we get x, then we know they're inverse functions. So f of g of x is f of x plus 3 over 5, because that's what g of x is. And I'm going to plug in x plus 3 over 5, where I see an x in the into this function, right, into f. So that's going to be 3 times x plus 3 over 5 minus 5. So we could distribute the 3. Remember, this is 3 over 1. So this is going to give you 3x plus 9 over 5 minus 5. You can go ahead and get a common denominator, but there's no way you're going to end up with this just being an x. So if you did want to go a little bit further, you can multiply by 5 over 5 to get a common denominator. And that'll give you 3x plus 9 minus 25 all over 5, which is 3x minus 16 over 5. So if it does not work, then it's also not going to work if you do g of f of x. So this is not inverses. f and g are not inverses, inverse functions. All right, let's do one more. Determine whether f and g are inverse functions. We have these two functions. So again, we'll start off with f of g of x. And in place of g of x, we've got negative 1 half x, since that's how it's defined. And now, we have to go back to f of x equals 2x and plug in negative 1 half x in place of this x. So that gives you 2 times negative 1 half x. And the 2's cancel, but you get negative 1x which is not x. Remember, if you do f of g of x, you have to get x. You can't get negative x, so no. f and g are not inverse functions. What if I had said g of x was positive 1 half x? What do you think will happen here? Imagine if you put in positive 1 half x, positive 1 half x here, you would end up with x. So 2x and 1 half x do end up being inverse functions. Okay.